All right, folks, earlier today on my noon show, America Talks Live, I had the pleasure of speaking with Mark McKinnon, former media advisor for President George W. Bush and Senator John McCain and executive producer and co-host of The Circus Inside the Greatest Political Show on Earth. And you could watch that, of course, on Showtime, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern and on demand. Mark, welcome back, sir. Good to talk to you. Hey, glad to be with you. How you doing? Ah, my head is spinning around, but otherwise I'm okay. Everybody's is spinning, man. What a week. Oh, my and goodness. In, but, in a year of crazy weeks, this may be the craziest. It might be. So tell us, what, first of all, to start, and then we'll finish with it also. What are you going to be uh, focusing on uh, Sunday night at 8 on, well, uh, on well, the circus? Thanks. Uh, we have a very interesting show this week because, th you know, we do something thematically different every week. And this week we decided to view the debate and the week through the, new, through the eyes of the news, through your eyes. Uh, and, and see how the news deals with the news of the campaign, if you will. And so we picked three platforms. We're, we're, we're with Megyn Kelly, we're with uh, Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski in The Morning Joe, and with the Bloomberg show that Mark and John do. And we, re we basically get behind the scenes in the control rooms, and we see what's fascinating is that, you know, I'm used to the campaign side, and I know the stress of that, but now we get a really good idea of the stress of, a, of what it takes to put on a live television show and it's some really great stuff. It's very dramatic and, you know, trying to get, you know, guests aren't showing up and, you know, it's post debate and it's all crazy, really fun stuff. Yeah, no, that's an, it's always great to get an inside look, especially for those who are not doing what you and I are doing. Uh, so I look forward to that. Okay, so, so, you know, it's been a crazy week. But again, I'll ask you the same question I asked my panel, the same question I asked Dick Morris, the same question I've been talking about all week. You know, the question always was, you know, if you remember months ago when, when uh, Hillary brought up something about women and Donald Trump said she better not go there, and she shut up about it. But then in the debate, to bring up this uh, Miss Universe and, and make this the issue somehow, uh, and the woman turns out to be, you know, involved in uh, sex on TV, uh, porn, uh, threatened a Venezuelan judge, according to the judge, which might have driven a getaway car for a murderer, et cetera. Uh, and yet the media still puts her on holds her up and says, how could Donald Trump say that to this poor woman? When, of course, the whole women issue, you would think Hillary would be scared of because it's not about philandering, as Jake Tapper says it is. It's about these women who say, Bill Clinton attacked me, and then Hillary hired a goon squad to go after me and ruin me. And yet the media couldn't care less. Well, Donald Trump didn't bring it up. He should have. Yeah, but, okay. Well, at the debate, yeah, but I mean, it, subsequently, the week's coverage has been Donald Trump. How could he say this? How could he say this? He says women are fat, women are fat. And, and, and you know, the, the surrogates are on there trying to go to Bill Clinton. And when they do, the hosts inevitably say, well, you know, his affairs are his business. It's not about his affairs. It's about the accusations these women have made against Hillary. The media is ignoring it. They don't put these women on. Well, listen, I mean, you know, if you want the media to cover it, bring it up in the debate. That's how you get the media to cover it. Well, look, so what? Okay, so you mean if, listen, Donald, just, Trump, just, wait, if Donald Trump said Juanita Broderick, then Juanita Broderick would, would be on every show the next day? I don't think so. Oh, I think so. I really? I think so. Okay. Hell yes. All right. Yeah, listen, I mean, I'm looking at this as a campaign guy. You mean, you know, if, you want to, if you want to fight and you want the media to play fair, you know, do your job in the debate. But you know, I couldn't I mean, agree Hillary, more. Yeah, yeah he, he blew that. I mean, he blew the debate yeah. on very many levels. But I just don't think, I don't think you'll ever see Kathleen Willey, Juanita Broderick, uh, Paula Jones, or any of them on network TV shows. No matter what he says, he could bring them to rallies, and I don't think you'll see them. I'll make you a little bet. I'll make you a dinner bet. Oh, okay. You're on. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she'd be all, any one of those step forward, they'd be all over cable All right. TV, all right. Good. All right. Now, let me ask you this. Why did... Barack Obama beat uh, uh, Mitt Romney, I think, uh, 60 to 37 with millennials in 2012. And Hillary has about a four or five point lead on Donald Trump with millennials this time around here in 2016. What is her problem uh, when it comes to the younger crowd? Millennials want change. They want change like, you know, like mo most other Americans do. And they're, they're skeptical. You know, they've seen, I mean, a lot of them voted for Barack Obama, and, and there's a good portion of them that are happy. You know, they were, uh, most of them, I mean, a good, good handful of them, probably majority of them, were, were for Bernie Sanders. Uh, they think, you know, they're, they see Hillary Clinton as part of the establishment, and, and they're, you know, many of them are as anti-establishment as, as Tea Party voters are. So, you know, 60-year-old Tea Party folks. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, and plus, a lot of them perceive them the way others do as, as not 
honest and, and uh, trustworthy. What about the, uh, the third party uh, issue here? I, I think 11 percent, and this accounts for a lot of it, 11 percent of the millennials are behind Gary Johnson. So two questions here. What do you make of his Aleppo moment and then referencing Aleppo two days ago when he couldn't name his favorite or most admired foreign leader? He, leader, he said, uh-oh, I think I'm having an, another Aleppo moment. So, I mean, how could anybody really take his candidacy seriously? seriously? Well, it's unfortunate. I mean, the, the, the fact is that in the current environment, people are very unhappy with the choices that they've got. And so they, you know, the voters were very much looking for an alternative choice. And Gary Johnson, the Libertarian ticket, could have been it. And they had, you know, for months and months and months been trying to get on, uh, trying to get more media attention. And that the very week or two when the media actually turns to them and gives them some exposure, you know, they get to, you know, they've been asking to get close to the sun. They got close to the sun and they melted. And uh, so uh, I think there's a lot of voters out there, you know, who are really disappointed now because they, they were thinking that they had another choice. And now they realize that their alternative choice is not an attractive one. Before the debate, and you and I haven't talked in several, several weeks, maybe a couple of months, um, how surprised were you, or is it kind of business as usual, that the race, you know, turned into, morphed into a dead heat, uh, not only nationally, but in battleground states for the most part as well? That it morphed into, it morphed into that, you mean? Yeah, at, be, at from, from Hillary debate. leading comfortably after yeah. her convention, yeah. Well, it was, uh, I mean, I think that just testifies to how volatile this race is. It's incredibly unstable, and, and I still would suggest that uh, despite this week that, it, you know, there's, it's, it's, there's a lot of instability still, and there will be right up until Election Day. But it, it's a month in which Donald Trump took advantage of a vacuum. Uh, Hillary Clinton came out of the convention with double-digit lead. She went off the radar screen. And he took advantage of it. And then she had the health issue. And then she had the deplorables issue, which was her worst moment of the game. That's her 47% moment. Uh, and the whole time that happened, she was out raising money. Now, so he took advantage. She was off the radar screen. Now, what could happen is that that money that she was raising in August when she was off the radar screen may come in handy here in the last weeks of the campaign. Yeah, no, absolutely. And he, he really hasn't spent all that much yet anyway. Uh, he's really going to have to do a, a job on that. All right, Mark, so we look forward uh, to the show on Sunday night on Showtime, folks, 8 p.m. Eastern. And you can watch it on demand, The Circus, Inside the Greatest Political Show on Earth with uh, Mark McKinnon. Thank you, sir. Great to talk to you. Hey, kick it hard. Thanks for having me. All right, take care. Now, why did the FBI let Hillary Clinton off for her email scandal despite her clear guilt? The reason? Well, Barack Obama was a co-conspirator, as our friends at the National Review demonstrate with the following, watch this.